Yes, everyone, welcome back to Vibe with Five. Stephen Alson, here with Rio. The last day of the season was what football was all about. There was something vibe on the game. Do you know what I'm, I'm most happy about this season? Man United didn't win anything, but we've come to a position where in Oli's tenure so far, we've seen progression. I think Sancho is one that I'd love to see come to United. I just think we need a centre-half. With a set top centre-back, I think we go on to really compete then. No I good. still think we need a six though. Should we do team of the year? All you like in the comments are probably going to try and leave Maguire out as well, but let's have it right. He's been mint for United this year. Yeah. You can't put Rudiger in, he's played 19 games. <laughs> that makes sense. Like, oh, these, this is what people like Joel do. They, they go on the moment. Let me give you my team then. Mount, De Bruyne, Bruno. You are team, with that. Yeah, your team gets destroyed. But this team ain't playing no one. This, te this team's never playing no one. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> This is the boot who's been the most consistent player. Mount has been ridiculously consistent. Every time I've watched Chelsea, he's been, if, if not the best, one of the top two or three players on the pitch. We talk about what happened yesterday. Oh, the game Wolves. Yeah, it just put a dampener on the whole day, really. This is why you need to stand up and you need to speak because these things shouldn't be happening. They shouldn't be allowed to continue. You shouldn't be swept under the carpet. It's been a, a, a really wild response, really, from all the guys on social media. Yeah, 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 yeah. You already know the vibes, vibe, looking in with the guys, guys. Stephen, Rio, and Joe, I got you in the five, five. You know the vibes, you know the guys, you know the trio. You know it's Steve, you know it's Joe, you know it's Rio. Yes, everyone, welcome back to Vibe with Five. Stephen Alson, here with Rio. Joel's not here. I know, mate. Is that a day off? Joe, where he is? Go on, tell me. Is it the airport? Is he? Go to get Ansk. <laughs> he thought he was going to watch Arsenal. He bought his tickets. He went all in to go and watch Arsenal when he's gone there now to support someone else. I suppose he's got a ticket. Board. He's got a ticket in the United end. Has he? Yeah. Oh, I hope he gets mullered. I hope they, <laughs> hope they see him and they just they get him in the mosh pit. Um, if you do find Joel over in Gdansk, don't hurt him. It's precious. But like, go and get a picture of him and send it to us. Yeah, on please. Our, on five. Anyone who sees him, please send a picture. I'd love it. With United <laughs> flags and everything around him. Yeah, get him holding a United flag. Yeah. Mint. Um, all right, so season's over domestically. Obviously, Joel's off to go and watch mm. United in the Europa final. We've got <laughs> the Champions League final this weekend. Um, mad season, isn't it? Yeah, it has been mad. I mean, like, Arsenal, I don't think they qualified for Europe, did they? First time in 25 or 25 years. I think years, escaped. I don't think qualified is the word. They escaped the Europa Conference. Yeah, yeah, they've done well, actually. Spurs in the Europa Conference, like I was buzzing off that. Seriously, it's unbelievable. Like, what? Who invented that competition? Like, how do you, how do you, the Europa Conference? That even just hearing that, you don't want to be a part of it. What drinking like, a theme tune's like? I don't think it's got a theme tune. Oh, of course it has. It's gonna be a flute or something in it. <laughs> I don't know, but no, it's it's been a mad season. Even yet, the last day of the season was what football's all about. There was something riding on the games. All relegation was settled, the champions were settled, and it was still carnage going right, into the just, last That's what I mean. Chelsea, at one point you're thinking they're out, they're not going to get in the Champions League. Tuchel going into the Champions League final on a knife edge of getting in the Champions League. You've got Leicester, are they going to blow it again? Uh, Liverpool come from nowhere. Yeah, and when Vardy scores the second, you're like... Phew, that's it. There you go, yeah. Leicester are in. Yeah. And then Spurs come back. Oh, Spurs have got mental. nothing to play for either, but it's only, only Kane really fighting for a golden boot. Yeah. But it was mad. It was, it was a great, great finish to the season. We got all the way back to the start of the season. We had that really short pre-season. We had those crazy games. Liverpool conceding seven, yeah. United conceding six, and City conceded five at one point yeah. as well. Leeds coming up and just tearing teams apart. Like, yeah. Just like playing no great football. No yeah. respect, just coming in and hitting everyone. Yeah, it was good. Then you had that first shit idea that all the clubs had, that project big picture. Yeah. Remember that? That hit a brick wall. <laughs> the coming out and saying, oh, it's about the redistribution of wealth. But, and how bad an idea would have this have been in hindsight if they'd have let this go through? Mm. Those six clubs that all tried to break away for the Super League, they was like, yeah, yeah, we'll give the Championship and League One, you'll get more cash. Mm. But we're just but about we're to go off. and yeah. rechange all these rules, which means that six of us can decide anything yeah. in the league. Thank God that didn't go through because... It's it's just been a season of, of madness. Like there's been so many different subplots to the season. And I think the obviously the, the breakaway Super League was the massive one, which could have destabilised and, and destroyed everything. But I think it was a the element of not having any fans, but the fans still having the power to be able to come together and have a, a collective voice to stop something from, like drastically changing the, the, the events and the future of football in this country. Um, it was it was amazing. So there was there were different things that had happened, but fans remained at the centre of everything really when mm. they weren't allowed in the stadium. So it was a bit it was a weird one, but I, I was just happy that the season ended with 
the Super League being bossed to one side, we set, helped set up a petition. Smashed um, it, 10 with hours. With different people in media. Yeah, 10 hours. I think within 10 hours, it was like over 100,000 signatures, which was fantastic. But yeah, I think it's, again, it, an accumula- it's a, a culmination of things all just coming together. And it was a weird season. Like you say, no pre-season. Uh, things are a bit weird. City have won the league. And at one point, early in the season, you're sitting there thinking, would they qualify for the for, for Champions League? And then they went on a... Yeah, but who was thinking that? Because I saw that. When United went top... I went, this is City's league still. Because mm. you, you saw the run that they had to go, and what did they put? To, I mean, I didn't expect them to put, was it 21 wins? Yeah, it was unbelievable. That was some run that was. Yeah, you deserve yeah. to win the league if you do that. Yeah. Hands down. They definitely deserved it. I think Liverpool fans will sit here and go, oh, we had big injuries and whatnot. But listen, you can't, you can't cry over spilt milk. It's happened. You had the injuries. You've not dealt with it. Big injuries, to be fair to him. Van Dijk was a huge loss. They still played in that Villa game, though, when they conceded seven. Yeah, People yeah. trying to rewrite that. Yeah, but I, just, I don't think Liverpool team looked like the same team anyway, did they? Before the injuries. But is mean? that the, the lack of pre-season thing? Especially Mate. with a team that relies on pressing? Yeah, maybe. That's a good point, actually. But then I just think City, what they've done is they tweaked tactically. They went from a team that was playing that, that gung-ho up and down football for the last year or so to a team that just twisted it a little bit, tightened things up, become a team that were more possession-based again and control games. And they just pulverised everyone. They were, they were just like relentless. Not everyone. Sorry, <laughs> it right. No, United obviously done well against them, to be fair. But I mean, I, I'm in check. Do you know what I'm, I'm most happy about this season? Man United didn't win anything, but we've come from a position where we weren't expected to win anything. But what we've seen a lot in Oli's tenure so far, we've seen progression. And I think that's, that's what's been most pleasing for me, that he's, he's progressed from last season to a position where second in the league, hopefully going to win the Europa League as well. well. I was going to say, how important is that? Because if we don't win that, mm. I still think the knives will be out, even though I don't think he could have won the league this year. I still think that there'll be a lot of people moaning. If he does win it, I think you can go, that was a good season. I think it's a, a, it's a good season if he, wins the, if he wins the Europa League. If he loses it, very disappointing. But you still an improvement on where we was, and you can see the team taking a bit of shape as well. Mm. You can you can see there's something in the team. Oh, I can see that now. We're on the we're on a good the right track. A couple more reinforcements, new faces in the squad, and actually, I think we could compete. That's the way I see it at the moment. But the recruitment, I think this summer's got to be right. And that's what worries me is I know I've been hurt before. <laughs> promised the world, promised this that and the other, expecting this that and the other. And then we get Overton and Michael Owen on a free. <laughs> Overton and Michael Owen. Michael Owen won a Carling Cup, didn't he? Okay. <laughs> but no, I know what you mean. You, you don't want it to be an underwhelming No, because the, recruitment honestly, season. I thought January was a good opportunity. United were top of the league. And I thought if we pushed, if we'd have brought Sancho in, yeah, but could you, we have like, kept it going? I agree with you, but it's, it's like, it's, it's not just about who we want, it's who wants to sell or who's willing to sell. Obviously, Dortmund needed Sancho. He was brilliant from Christmas on yeah. to qualify Mad for the Champions forgot League. That. Oh, he's, he was he unbelievable. He started slow, yeah, so everyone just went, he shit this year. Yeah, I agree. But that's people that don't watch other football, they just watch the Premier League and that's it. He's been magnificent, Sancho. If he comes to Man United, he will light this place up. So I, I think Sancho is one that I'd love to see come to United. Um... And then I just think we need a centre half. People can talk about midfielders and this and that. I think we've got enough bodies in there to be able to con- to, to, to do all right in there and do enough. With a set top centre back, I think we go on to really compete. Then and you see what the impact of a centre back does. Yeah, look, well, Diaz, Diaz is Diaz fantastic. At, at City, Mint. So it shows. I still that. think we need a six though, because I think we've got two players filling one shirt at the moment with Fred and McTominay. I know you like McTominay, I think he could do I know, it. I, understand, I get that, but I think if you, this is what I think the jigsaw. If you get the centre half to play get alongside Maguire, who's quick as well, do you need to play two holders then? You don't. You don't, but I think one world class one could do it anyway. Yeah, but I'd even look at someone like, listen, I'm telling you, I've. Even Pogba in there, but McTominay in there in, 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 is the one to get the ball to the people that can create and stuff. I just I just want to see one holder in there rather than yeah. two. So, and I think that's where you, I think if you went with uh, a Neves, that was more in the Carrick sort of mould, because you don't, Kante made destroyers popular, didn't they? Like, that was mm. the thing, like, mm. you have to be this all action, tackle everything sort of thing. But you don't need that. 
I think you can still have someone who's a bit more refined and a bit more you know, non combative about it. And I think that someone like a Neves, someone who just holds the ball really well, moves it forward simply. But Neves, also where is like, he? Neves? Neves, Wolves. Oh, I got you, sorry, yeah. Um, and I think someone like him, because he's, mm. he's still like 23, 24, he's still well young, he's been in the Prem for years. I like him, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I know what you mean, but it's just defensively, I just, I just worry about him. Um, yeah, but Carrick didn't go steaming into tackles. No, no, Carrick was, but Carrick was an unbelievable reader. He didn't have to tackle half the time, he stopped balls coming in. I was behind him and I'd be screaming to him, left or right, up or back, simple instructions. If I'm shouting him to go right and the ball's on, their left back's got the ball, and I shout him to go right, to cut the line of the ball coming into the centre centre forward, I can then drop off a little bit. I haven't got to be tight. And then I can cover the full back if it goes over his head or if the ball goes like over hit, I'm there waiting. And I ain't got to go tight because Carrick's, he's stopping the ball into the forward. But then the centre forward then always thinks, I can't get the ball because Carrick's there. I go even deeper. And I'm thinking, thank goodness for that. I'm playing against no one today. So it's little things like that, the little details that have a knock-on effect through the team where you think, their biggest threat is actually now going into midfield all the time. And it, you don't score goals necessarily all the time if your centre forward's not up the pitch, mm. other than if you're City, obviously. Do you think Kane could upset the balance if he goes there? Sort of plays in the sort of space that De Bruyne likes? No, because I think De Bruyne will drop back again into midfield. I think he'll play De Bruyne and Gundogan or Bernardo Silva in one of them two and number eight positions. And then the centre forward... Kane, and that's what I think why Kane would suit City because he's as, he's as comfortable dropping deep and playing as a 10 as he is as playing as a number nine right up there. Mm. I'm just, I think I'm more hoping that he fucks him up if he goes there, to be honest. I know what you mean from a, from a United perspective, you'd like to think <laughs> that he'd destabilise the whole thing. <laughs> um, West Ham did all right this year under Mars, oh. didn't they? Did you see that coming? Did you say Champions League? You said the finish, didn't Might you? have done. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think they're up a Europa League mate what, what, what he's done there I think I'm pleased for David Moyes he keeps for six in the end six, uh, six yeah six. and I gave him some stick after what happened to Man United um, the way things panned out probably for me as well as much as it was the way he he, he done there and I think it's, it's another one of them things with hindsight he would approach the Man United situation as a manager very differently now with the experience that he had and then he had a couple of different in different periods again at, at a couple of clubs and I thought well, has he got the opportunity to go out at West Ham he obviously can't he's not been doing it last oh, it few, was, it few was clubs a, it was a Sociedad, failure tour Real Sociedad went on, and it? Sunderland yeah just... and you just thought how's he getting this opportunity does he warrant it and etc but listen he has gone in there and shut everybody up and I said this on BT yesterday speaking to the players in that football club they love him wow they love him in that he's come in there and his reputation was probably hanging by a thread at that point. He's restabilised not only himself, but the football club. And I think one thing he's been fortunate with probably, which is no slight on him, but he's probably, I think he'd maybe admit himself, he hasn't had the fans in there. Because I think some players, it's a, it's, a, it's a hard place to play West Ham. They're hard fans to please as well at times. And if there's a bit of a moment in the season where things weren't going well, they do get on you. And then it's about characters having the right people. They've not had that pressure, which maybe helped them. But listen, they, everyone's had the do's and don'ts and the good and bad with the fans being there or not. So they've, they've been magnificent. And West Ham, I'm, I, I'm interested to see what they do recruitment-wise. Because mm. he's, he's had two really good signings. Um, Suchek and Kufo, the right-back. Also, the, um, center, Dawson at centre-back has been brilliant as yeah. well. So good to see what they'll do next year. Suchek especially. I've put him in my team of the year. We'll talk about team of the year in a minute. And he's we'll... made your team of the year? Yeah. We'll talk about it in a minute. Wow. Um, Wow. Does Moyes get your manager of the year? Yeah. Moyes gets manager. From where he took West Ham from and where he took himself from and the expectations on him as a manager, he's made remarkable growth. At one point, I was thinking it's Dean Smith's all day long, this, but mm. Villa fell off. Possibly through losing Grealish. You know, Grealish was just over half the season, yeah. I think. I think that's had a massive impact on him. Mm. Uh, but it was Dean Smith for me up until, up until then, really. But yeah, I think it's got to be David Moyes. Yeah, 100% agree with him. Um, should we do team of the year? I'm, I'm just looking forward to doing it. I love, I love this part. All right. Give me your team. I've seen your team. In should we start with anyway. my team or should we start with Joel's team? Start with Joel's team because he's not here. Right. He, first of all, by the way, he actually said, we all three of us sent our teams into the WhatsApp group, yeah? Joel put his team in first. Bold in there. I looked at his team and I thought, oh. His team would beat both of our teams though. His team would destroy up both of our teams. Tell him why. He's got 12 players in it. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> like he's button bashing the whole the phone. I don't know what he was doing. It was a joke. Twelve players. 
So here's, um, here's, here's his team anyway. Do you want to read it out? I ain't got it. Oh, his, t- his team was Mendy in goal, Walker right back, Rudiger and Diaz centre halves, Shaw left back, Kante holding, De Bruyne, Mount, Bruno midfield as well, <laughs> Salah, Kane and Son. That was his 12 players. So when we uh, actually notified him that he has actually got 12 players, he'd take Kante out. So his midfield reads KDB, Mount and Bruno. He's not balancing that, is there? Do you need... Uh, this is a good question as well. We're not looking for the team that's going to go out and win. It's just who's been the best players. That I pick team. it with balance. No, you can't. That's, well, that's why Suix and Suchek's in there. Go on, um, then, your right, team. Mine was Martinez, because I think he's been mint. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think out, people just don't look outside the top four usually for it. But uh, back four, Cancelo, Diaz, Maguire and Shaw. I'm shocked he put Rudiger in. Mm. And, and I actually think that all you lot in the comments are probably going to try and leave Maguire out as well. But let's have it right. He's been mint for United this year. Yeah. Out, the first six weeks or so out, out I think his head was still in Greece a little bit outside of that he's been top you can't put Rudiger in he's played 19 games <laughs> don't make sense like, oh, this, this is what people like Joel do they, they go on the moment like right now they don't look back over the course of the whole season he's had a, he's, Mendy and he's been, as well it's Mendy as well yeah I think Mendy's been brilliant Rudiger's been, I think Rudiger since he's been playing has been probably second or third best as centre half after Diaz maybe Stones Maguire, he's been in easy. He's just around that bottom of that group. He's been brilliant, Rudiger, since he's been playing. Since a new manager came in, but you can't put someone in who's had half a season. No. Sorry, um, Suchek, um in the six. He scored, he scored a few goals, didn't he? It's not about. I think he's he's lifted West Ham. Have you watched him play? Them. Yeah. Okay. I think he's lifted them. Right. What? I just don't what? think. I don't think he gets in that midfield. So Suchek's been better than someone like Gundogan. He's got 13 goals this season. Yeah, because sometimes I think it's easier to perform in a team that's performing around you. And I think he's been one of the reasons why West Ham have had the season that they've had. And I think that's noteworthy. Why is it easier to perform in a good team? I don't understand. Because you've got better players around you. It's just easier to be good in a good team. But people would argue that maybe, I don't know, so if you're still looking at good teams like Fred then, why has he been like outstanding every, every week then? Because it's easier. It's not easy. It's easier. I think Suchek, you put him in City. So he's been better than... So what about Tielemans or Ndidi? Um, I think he's been better than Ndidi. Tielemans are really great, but I'm putting KDB and Bruno in as the more attacking ones. All right, go on then. Um, Salah, Kane and Son as my forward three. I agree. No arguments at all. Grealish I, I can't believe some people have got Salah not in their team. Yeah, he wasn't in mine at first. What? Why? <laughs> well, I was putting Grealish in first. No, I, I love Grealish, don't get me wrong, but the injuries have, have, have killed he's him. He's played 26 games. Yeah, so he's, that, that's, that's what killed it for me. If he continued playing, Grealish starts 100% on the left. Foden as well is unlucky not to get in. But I just think Son, has, in terms of assists and goals, Son, I, I looked this up earlier, Son... Smashed it. He killed it. Son was, was unbelievable. But it's more like... I think that's why I keep going back to this. People just say, oh, there's moments. In this moment, I'm, I'm looking at it that... Sanso's been the best player this last couple of weeks. But you, yeah, look you get at, a lot of that in the team of the year stuff. Yeah, and that's what I think. You look at Son, Son's got 17 goals. I've got it here. 17 goals. It's double figures, in it? 10 assists. assists. Yeah. And you're not even considering them. It don't make sense. <laughs> Salah's gone for top goal scorer, second in the golden boot by one goal and people are dismissing him. That's your forward three. Yeah, and Kane obviously has got the most goals and most assists. He has to walk into the team. Yeah. Let me give you my team then. My team is... I've got to go and have a look at because I wrote it down and I don't want to get it wrong. I think you want it too different for me. That's yeah, it. we had quite a similar team actually. You obviously saw mine and just copied it. But. <laughs> Edison in goal. I understand you said about Martinez, but he's got the most clean sheets. Edison's Thanks for got, City. Doesn't matter, he's got the most, yeah, but most clean sheets. How many saves is he making? Five. How many times does teams win the league and don't have the best record defensively? Just, that happens. Okay. Edison, best keeper with his feet. His passing range is ridiculous. He's good. Um, Hey, well, I, saw, I saw a start though, as I was looking at the goalkeepers because I did a bit of research on it. Mm. Sam Johnson's faced 12 penalties this mm. season. Do you know how many have gone in? Eight. Seven. Good, that's good. They missed a few, don't but make saved you, a few. Don't make you the, the, the number one goalkeeper this season though, does it? I'm not team, I'm just saying. Oh, okay. Do you think he's top goalkeeper? No. No? I just put, oh, who? Johnson. I think he is a top goalkeeper. I don't think he's, think he's the top goalkeeper. I think he's got a chance, definitely. Right, you can interrupt my team again. Oh. Go on then. All right, sorry. Walker right back. I think he's just dominated. Maguire and Diaz. Shaw left back. I almost put Cresswell in there. 
to be fair. Most assists, you know. Most assists this year from a fullback. People think it's a foregone conclusion for sure. He's had a, an amazing six months, mm. but he wasn't doing what he's doing now at the start of the season. Cresswell's been pretty consistent. Yeah, Cresswell almost made it, but I just don't know, man. I think Shaw's just been a bit more, he gives a bit, he's, he's I don't know, it was a hard one. Chris, Cresswell could get in my team, I might change it, I don't know. No, no, no. Shaw's in my team. Mount. Jesus, people say, I've got a Shaw agenda. No, Mount, De Bruyne, Bruno. You, you, you are going with that? Yeah, your team gets destroyed. But this team ain't playing no one. This, te this team's never playing no one. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> this is the who's been the most consistent player. Mount has been ridiculously consistent. Every time I've watched Chelsea, he's been, if, if not the best, one of the top two or three players on the pitch. It's interesting. Each time. Under Frank, they used to call him Son of Frank, didn't they? It was like, yeah. he's only getting games yeah. for whatever reason. Disrespectful. Hmm? He's, an, he's, he's so sound in all areas of his game. And I think he's only going to get better. Great kid as well. Bruno, obviously, the assists and the creativity that he brings in KDB. KDB, isn't it? Do you reckon anyone's not got them in the team? Not got who? The Bruno and KDB. Not really, no. Gundogan almost got in my team, you know. Because for a, for a period when KDB was injured, he carried that team. He was scoring goals, yeah. though, wasn't he? He scored a ridiculous amount of goals. Um, and up front, the same as yours. Salah, Kane and Son. I think it's got to be them three. Yeah. It's got to be No one else can go in there. Like I say, Foden... You could argue maybe a little bit, but he, it, when you look at Son's goals and assists record, he has to go in there, man. You, not often you get double figures both. Goals and assists. So yeah, that's, that's the team. My team's the best. Team gets <laughs> ruined. Um, can we talk about what happened yesterday? Yeah. What, what? Happened, yes what happened yesterday? Oh, the game Wolves. Yeah, man, it's disappointing. It's disappointing because it's, so, like, it's such a beautiful thing to see the excitement of the fans coming in. We're there early before the game, uh, when you do it with BT, we've got on a platform, all the cameras and lighting, etc. there. So you get to watch the warm-up, you get the fans just filtering in, and just to feel the atmosphere start rising is just an unbelievable thing because we haven't had it for so long. I remember you said it was at Wembley last week. Yeah. You said it felt mad just being yeah, part of that. Oh, it was just 22,000 fans, it was, it was amazing. And then obviously again, the fans start coming in and you think, wow, this is brilliant. And to be fair, as the game started, United score early. I'm obviously celebrating a little bit. The fans are right near us and they're, half of them are giving me a bit of stick. I'm giving a little bit back, like messing about banter, football banter, which is normal. They score, they give me loads of stick, whatever. And then all of a sudden, this geezer just starts like really going off on one. Or there's a few of them, actually. And then one of the security guys obviously um, made me aware of what's happened. A fella's been taken out because he was doing uh, monkey gestures. So you didn't um, see it, no, they just come no, up and told you. A couple of, yeah, a couple of times, and it was obviously on the camera. They caught him on the camera, went out again, and he got reported again. But to be fair to the Wolves fans, some of the Wolves fans reported him. Um, so it was crazy. It was, um, yeah, it just put a dampener on the whole day, really, because it was a great day in terms of watching the results all come in mm. and what it meant for certain teams. And then this just puts a dampener on you. You think, you know, actually, this is why you need to stand up and you need to speak because... These things shouldn't be happening. They shouldn't be allowed to continue. You shouldn't be swept under the carpet. And so it's been a, a, a really wild response, really, from all the guys on social media. The, the, the Wolves, Wolves dealt with it well, the football they? club, yeah. Um, the, the, the police force over there in, in, the, in the Midlands. So I think the, the, they come together and they're sorting it out. So I, I think I've got to speak to the police to, after this, actually, um, as to how it gets handled. Thoughts on Wednesday without Maguire? Can we do it? Well, Bailly played yesterday with Twanzebe, and if you're looking at them, the two players, Twanzebe was probably the better centre back yesterday. He made a couple of crucial blocks yeah, in the I'd game. Yeah, more than probably. Yeah, I think he really, and, um, really good yesterday. He, he, if it was an audition for the champion for the for the Europa League final, I think Axel probably plays. Um, will he go over the experience of a, of a Bailly? Uh, he's played in Spain. That's a big part of it. He played obviously from Valencia, um, so he'll know. So, sorry, but, uh, yeah, but he's from over there. But he's, he, he came from Spain. He understands their game. That experience may be something that is telling when the manager makes a selection. But I, f I think we, we'll beat him. It's not a foregone conclusion. They're a decent team. Emery's crafty enough. Yeah. We've struggled against him in the past. Yeah. What's the week look like for United players? You know, obviously, you've got a big European final midweek. Hmm. It's on a Wednesday night. Often we play on the Sunday. Do you know, do you know the difference is, is, I looked at this yesterday, when I was preparing for, for Champions League final, this is the Europa League, but when I had to prepare for a Champions League final, we, I normally had 10 days. Wow. Um, oh, on, is that the FA Cup in between usually? Yeah. 
or, or, or seven minimum, or maximum, minimum seven, seven but may, I think twice, definitely 10 days preparation. Oh, it moved to Saturday nights, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. So you sit in there and you go, we've got 10 full days to prepare. It's a long time, it's probably too long. You'd, look, you'd want five, six days maybe. But they've got a short turnaround. Do you know what I mean? And this, it's like, okay, and it's, it's, that game's gone. And it was refreshing that they won that game. So there's no hangover at all. But the players will just be thinking mentally, tune in now. Like, what do I need to do? The new ball, very different, the ball, from what I hear from the guys. So mm. what happens is you play the game on the, the, the lead up last week for this game, they've been using Premier League balls. The day this, this game, yeah, in training. This game finishes yesterday. New balls. Today, then Premier League balls will be gone. Now it's all the new balls and it's getting used to the ball. I used to hate, the Champions League ball is a good ball to be fair, but the, like the Carling Cup ball was horrendous. Like a, like a dead ball it was. You couldn't get no cur- cur- that proper shape on it or anything. So it's do little things like that that you have to tweak in your game and get used a lot to. Lot of corners, a lot of free kicks. Yeah, stuff yeah. Like that. Getting used to the ball, doing drills, yeah. and then you've got. Then it's about mentally making sure that you're right, tuning into the players, getting your iPad, your clips of the opposing players because they don't know half of these players probably. Yeah. So you as a defender, what are you doing? You're looking at the attack line. Yeah. I'm looking at, I, I want to know where their goals are coming from all the time. What's their favourable, right or left? Um, how many crosses they put in the box? Now I want to know about the striker. What's his, where's his mo- where's he most comfortable? Mm. Where's he prefer taking the ball, left or right? Is he more comfortable on his left foot or is he, he don't mind having a shot on his right if he has to? Does he like running in behind, coming short? The profile of the player, like all these little details. They got all the data at their fingertips now. They should be going into that game well versed on every single player. So. That, that is what you do and then obviously then it's about what you don't want to overcook it worrying about them you just want to get yourself familiar and then it's about what we're going to do to hurt them Fergie had this um, thing with um, I think it's in one of his autobiographies um, and it's in I think it's in one of Jonathan Wilson's books as well which is Fergie likes to sort of touch on the opposition a little bit but really big up our strengths so you go into it feeling confident mm. I think it was the Inter Milan coach ahead of playing Celtic in 67. He spent that long focusing on how good Celtic was. Some of the Inter Milan players went to bed throwing up, like worried. You, you, know, you know what it does? So this is David Moyes, why I didn't like his management style at the time at May United. Um, we've gone from Sir Alex Ferguson, it, it was about us, about what we do. We're better than them. Touch on it and then focus yeah. on how good we are. They're, they're, they've got a couple of things what they do, what they're dangerous at. This is what they're good at. Rory Delap throws the ball into the box, Peter Crouch, he aims for him. We'll work on that, but all the other stuff, but is it's about us. We, we don't concede from set pieces, we beat them by doing this. And this is what we're good at. You're brilliant at that. You score there, this, that and the other. So you're confident. And David Moyes comes in, I'll never forget it. We had Chelsea and, and Liverpool within, I think within about four or five days Chelsea had Eden Hazard, Liverpool had Coutinho, both played in that similar left-hand side, inside left pocket mm. behind the midfield, just a bit deeper than the forwards. And I remember he, we set up a training game and he, he marked out a 10 by 10 box or 15 by 15 box in that area where Hazard and Coutinho would play. And we was like, what the fuck's that? what's that about? This is where Hazard plays and next week this is where Coutinho will play. Tom Cleverley, you don't move out of that box. I was like, whoa, no, no. That means we're one less player when we've got the ball. Yeah. I don't, we, why are we worried? And the session was all about stopping the ball, getting to that. I understand that, but when you drill down on that so much, you're saying that you start thinking, so, is he that good? <laughs> he must be a world beat. He's that messy we're, we're playing against here. Like, like, as good as, no disrespect, but as good as Hazard and Coutinho were, we'd never worried about a single player. Like you that. never, you never even literally did that far. We'd never, that. ever, ever, ever catered to a player. So I'll see Alex Ferguson say the other day in his um, lead up to his uh, documentary that he wished he'd man marked Messi in the final with, with, Park. with Park. I get that, but he wouldn't have worked on it. He'd have just said you're marking him. Yeah, I and mean, you might have, might have worked on it a little bit, but it's different. It's Messi. Do you know what I mean? I think it's been funny. Coutinho and Hazard are great players, but they're not Messi. But it was just like it was so far removed from what we were used to doing as Man United players. It was almost an ego thing. It was almost like a, we're Man United. We don't worry about them. They worry about us. That's how we approach games. So to think that we're going to really over-exaggerate the quality of these other players in this other team was really a, like a, an absolute mindfuck, really. You're just sitting there thinking, this is a wind-up. 
he don't know he don't know this isn't he don't know what this badge means this badge means we don't worry about nobody but i'm standing here what, talking about tom clevery not moving out of a box 15 by 15 i can't believe my eyes so that was already getting my back up with david Moyes, to be honest with you but did then, you vocalize that because i get the to impression a certain, that you do yeah to to, to a degree but then you, then you it's, it's a balance and you don't want to undermine the manager he's new to the job so you respect him i respected David Moyes, I respect him now, obviously, but I respect him as a manager. So to undermine him early, so early in his tenure, it would have been, it would have been bad for the this whole was squad. Like September, October. Yeah, it's it? early. So I'm sitting there thinking, wow. And then I can't remember. We might have even won a couple of them games, which is fine. But it's just the whole mental side of things that it, didn't, it becomes a team that we're every game we're going into we're worrying about the opposition far too much it just didn't sit right and it just wasn't what any of us were used to so but again like that, that that's why i really admire what david moyes is doing now because he's gone and rebuilt again maybe just west ham suits him yeah yeah being yeah. a team that wants to worry about your star player mm. and then plays what they can around that versus obviously manchester united yeah and it's the idea is we courses, turn up and it? slap you it's horses for courses isn't yeah. it and it's he, he may be suited to being that type of manager with a certain particular type of team but you you still what he's done has been remarkable at west ham but yeah that was that was how it was if, with at united it was it was a weird one all so, right yeah. we'll wrap up on that then are we winning wednesday night yeah i think we win i think we win i think they score but i think we've got too much firepower i think we'll we'll hurt them i think we win by two goals do you know what I think we've got? Match winners. Yeah. Cavani, Rashford, oh, Bruno. Oh, oh. Even Greenwood. Greenwood. He's on fire at the minute. Greenwood. Greenwood's played himself in the England squad. 100%. If he doesn't go, I don't know football. <laughs> <laughs> right. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to go and find Joe. Joel in England. Yeah, do not, for, do not let Joel get over there and don't get a picture with a Man United scarf and a Man United <laughs> flag wrapped around him, please. Um, and if you're over in Poland and enjoy the game, um, we'll see you on the other side. Good Lighters. luck, Man United. And Pep, it's mad, right? This morning, Pep's, I was staying where Pep lives and he, uh, he come, out, come down after I was having breakfast and he saw me in the window, he was like, walking out. He come back in, <laughs> how you doing, a little chat. And then um, some geezers come and said, oh, we are going to have a picture. I said, one minute, I'm just talking to fucking Pep, hold on. Give me a sec. So then I was carried on talking, and then the geezer's gone, can I have a picture? I went, yeah, I mean, his missus. And he went, um, can you take it, please? To Pep? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I went, no, 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 you can't do that. He said, I said, you know what? Well, he went, no, no, I do this to my kids all the time, don't worry. We really started taking a picture. Really? And I was standing there so embarrassed, and I said to the geezer after, I said, mate, do you want to take the other He went, yeah, but Man United. <laughs> I was like, actually, yeah, I, re I, 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 went, I realized actually now that you, you forget when you leave Manchester, yeah. you forget like the, the intensity.